Thank you for joining EdPlace Live Lessons from your homes. I'm Miss Turner and you've joined us for a Year 8 English lesson today. We're an online digital learning platform written by teachers for children in Year 1 to Year 11, offering English, Maths, Science and 11 plus self-marked activities written by fully qualified teachers. We're bringing live English, Maths and Science lessons into your homes during the school closure period. So why not join us over the next few weeks as we tackle some key topics? You might find it useful to have a pen and paper handy as we go so that you can make a note of key ideas or jot things down. You'll also need to access your EdPlace account. If you don't have an EdPlace account, do not worry. You can access all of our activities if you go to edplace.com. We'll go over that in more detail when we get to that part. So welcome to today's English lesson on developing a formal writing style with Miss Turner. By the end of today's lesson, we're aiming to have achieved either one or all of the following three steps to be able to identify that there are different varieties of English, to understand how the language we use changes to match its purpose and audience, and we hope you can show that by explaining why and how we make our language choices. Let's start by thinking about why we need to develop a formal style of writing by identifying different ways we communicate. When we are small and living with our families and communities, we learn the words that are in everyday use. Some of these may be particular to where we live. These are our dialect words. And the way we pronounce them are our local accents. This variety means that across the UK, a game of chase may be known as it, tig, tag or tiggy, and there are many words used when calling a truce too. Pax, barley, scribs, feynite, skin cheese, cross keys and full stop. Can you think of any other ones? And which ones do you use? When we need to extend and communicate with people outside our own immediate group, we need to switch into standard English, which has become the form of English used worldwide. It's also this standard English we mostly use when we are writing. And this is one reason spelling may be tricky, as words are not written as they sound in our accent. One common error that comes from writing down what we hear is with should have, could have, would have. We may hear of when grammatically the correct use is have. Now we can mask this in speech, but it is exposed if you write it incorrectly. Do use that as a top tip for upgrading your writing. As we discuss developing a formal writing style, you will notice that in every task you are given, you will need to identify who you are writing to and why you are writing. You will know these as the audience and purpose, and let's look at them a little more closely. Even though we will mostly use standard English for our writing, we also need to know how to write in a more formal way. We look at the purpose of the writing and learn the style of writing which matches it. It may be an essay that should have an introduction, paragraphs and finish with a conclusion. In a few years, you may be preparing an application form for a college place. And later, we all need to manage the business of our lives, our finances and household bills. So we need to learn to write in a way that gets us the best response. So once we know why we are writing, we also always consider our audience, who we are writing for, and we adjust to that. I'm going to focus on three more tips that will help you write in the right way. Let's remember contractions, where we squeeze syllables together, we make the word shorter, and we may have to use an apostrophe in there when we write it down. These are another hangover from putting speech into writing. They come from wanting to get our ideas across quickly. We can use them in informal writing, such as I'll be able to meet on Thursday if you're available, but 
we should avoid them if we want a formal style. Look at how easily that has become more formal just by changing it to, I will be able to meet on Thursday if you are available. Our choice of words is a big indicator of how well we have mastered this. This is where you should choose the best word you know. In my example here, you can see that going to the cinema is probably quite relaxed and informal, so going to works. As soon as I see the word ceremony, it implies a more formal event, so it is more appropriate to match that by using attending. That's all it's about. Acquiring a better vocabulary is a great way to improve your formal writing. And the best way to learn is to notice how skilled people use formal language. A word of warning, try not to go to extremes. Choose the best word and not the fanciest. And now let's look at conventions of form. This means learning the standard layout or headings or even fonts that are used for formal writing. This is the shape of the writing you see before you read it. Letter layout is a great one to get right. You can see the conventions here. Put the sender's contact details on the right with the date, the recipients on the left. May need a reference number or heading that is centered, and then the salutation, the greeting. If you know the name of the person you're writing to, use that. If you don't, use dear sir or madam. Then you write your text in appropriate paragraphs and finally choose the correct complementary closing. Yours sincerely matches using the person's name. Yours faithfully with dear sir or madam. Sign and then print your name. One further tip. Also try to develop an eye for noticing how leaflets or articles are presented too. Now's the time to sign in to your EdPlace account or go to www.edplace.com. Make your way through the next activity before we revisit it together. Here's how to find the activity under English, Year 8, Writing. It is writing in formal language, the caravan. How did you get on? Let's take a look at the activity together. First of all, the purpose is to report an incident. You're writing in the role of a police officer. Your audience will be other professionals investigating this matter. You have an eyewitness account and it's pretty much written as it was spoken. You need to turn this into a formal account to make it official. Now, I've highlighted question one here because it reminds us that when we are recounting an incident, it's really important to organise the sequence of events correctly. And using a plan is a great help here. You may wish to include day, date, time and the place as a way to get started. Question three focuses on language choice. Using these connectives not only makes your writing sound formal, it builds up the structure too, making the progress of points clear and easy to follow. A handful of well-chosen connectives should be part of every writer's toolkit. Finally, with question five, a great way to ensure your style is formal is to take a step back and write in an impersonal way. All of this takes practice. So by the time you've completed the EdPlace activities here, you should be well on your way to having a formal style ready at your fingertips. Let's recap what we set out to do today. Can you identify the differences between everyday English that is used for speech and the standard formal English we use for some of our writing? Do you understand some of the changes we make, such as the words we use and the way we write them to develop a formal style? And can you set yourself a challenge and explain what you've practiced today to someone else? We know that you may need a little more practice to really master these skills. So here are some others to help you develop your confidence in writing in a formal style. The activity we have just looked at is listed as activity two. 
why not try out the convention of writing a formal letter next? That's listed as activity one. As we finish up for today, here are other places you can find us or access support. We look forward to working with you again soon and keep practicing in the meantime. <laughs>